Good morning, everybody. Can everyone uh, hear my voice? Let me just turn on the screen sharing here. Yes. Where is my MT4? Okay, yes, audio and video is good. Okay, great, great. How is everybody? Good, good, good. Okay, just before we begin here, uh, how many of you guys are new? It's your first time in any of my webinars or any of our webinars at Urban Forex. Raul Smith, Minto, Paolo, Dan. Okay, great, great. So welcome to the community. Um, and uh, you guys will probably notice that this is a really closed community where everybody is just tied together and uh, we make sure we look out for everybody as much as we can. So um, again, welcome to the community. And um, today what we're going to do is uh, discuss um, a strategy around uh, support and resistance. Now, um, last time I taught you guys how we do support and resistance and many of you guys requested, okay, now it's time for a strategy. Okay, so we're going to discuss that. Now, before we get into the strategy part, uh, let me get into uh, a little base recap of uh, support and resistance again. And what we're going to do is as we go through all of this, this is going to be a um, one hour, uh, uh, pretty much a one hour webinar. We're going to split the webinars, the first half as a learning experience and the last half as an interaction and we'll keep all the questions to in the middle and towards the end of the webinar. Okay, if there is, is any audio issues, let me know. Um, here, let me, let me reset the audio one more time, see if that helps, one moment. How many of you guys have actually audio issues? Can you make the candles darker? Uh, yes, I can. Okay, I've reset the audio. It should be fine. If it's still not fine, um, this is recorded, so not to worry there. Okay, for those of you who need a darker charts, let me make them dark for you. All right, great. Yeah, um, sorry, Mark, but uh, it's recorded, so uh, not to worry there. Now. <clears throat> Base recap on support and resistance. Now, um, okay, the traditional books when you when you learn support and resistance is they tell you that uh, the area where the market um, turned around from is your level of support or or resistance. You know, for example, here, this would be considered your resistance, or up here, this would be your resistance. You know, this area down here would be your support. Okay. Now, this is the traditional saying that this is your support, this is your resistance, okay? Um, anything below the current market is called support. Anything above uh, the current market is called resistance. Now, that's not the way um, I, I particularly do it, and I've introduced this method to hundreds, in fact, thousands of people now that, uh, you know, the way you do support resistance is not that way, okay? And here's, here's why. Support and resistance, like anything else, works with level of strength, okay? There is a million support and resistance. You can technically draw resistance on top of each candle if you want to really get into the nitty-gritty of it, and you'll just go crazy. And be like, okay, this is resistance, this is resistance, resistance, and sooner or later you become like Einstein, you know, crazy hairdo. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. You want to understand the, the level of strength of particular support and resistance level. Now, if you guys want to take notes, take notes. Support and resistance, the, the, the best levels consist of three things. That's particularly, that same particular level that you draw must be a level that has been used as support and it must be a level that has been used as resistance. And finally, the third thing, 
there must have been a big candle that broke through it at one point. These are the three things for um, support and resistance. Let me give you an example. Okay, let's take a look sort of into the past. Let's get you some tips and clues. Okay, now for example, we take a look at this area here. Okay, um, I'm Mayor Rosie. The everything is recorded in case. Uh, still okay. Let me do this. Let me turn off the VPN. See if that makes a difference. One moment, please. Give it a second. And okay. How about now? Is it better now? Hopefully. Okay. I'm going to repeat this one more time and we'll see hopefully it's better or not if not just wait for uh, the recording okay the three things for support and resistance information uh, okay the first thing the level that you draw must have been used as support it must have been used as resistance okay and last but not least there must have been a big candle break from this level which indicates this level being strong okay let's go through this example now how how are you supposed to draw support and resistance is it just this tip here okay the answer is no support and resistance can range from the body all the way up to the tail okay what is a tail? A tail is basically telling you that the market tried to push, but it could not close her. It came down and closed. So if I draw on this particular body, at the top of this body, do you see any single body coming out of this area? No, right? For two days, nonstop, not a single body was able to come out of this area. It pushed, but it wasn't able to close outside of it which means this area has just as much as strength as does as does the tip this is how you create a range you always need a range when you're drawing support resistance it is not the traditional one line method that is taught okay because if i say the support is at 1.2555 your chart 1.2555 is not the same as my chart your broker's numbers are different than mine's Okay, so you always need a range to get a sense of idea. Okay, our charts might be different, but it's not going to be 100 pips of difference. It's going to be a few pips. This is why you always need to have a range. Next thing, when you draw this area, okay, this is your resistance. It's above the market. So resistance, resistance. Over here, we had a big candle break. One big candle breaks through. This indicates that this level that we drew is a strong level okay this is a strong level that we just broke through okay now we've had resistance big candle breaks here also take a look big candles coming through this area did we have uh, support you know we had resistance let's go back and check did we have support in this area let's go back oh well what do you know take a look at this you see how this entire area of 28 January, 29 January gets covered? Okay, it covers both of these areas as support. So we have support, we have resistance, and a big candle break. Oh, sorry. Let's, let's go forward. We've had a big candle break as well. So this area now indicates, now that we've crossed through, now, even once the market crosses through, the traditional method that explains is once you cross a level, that level becomes the opposite. Okay, this was resistance. It broke through a big candle. Now it became support. Okay, this because we know this area is strong, we're going to be using this area in, in the near future also. And the market tends to respect it not once, but twice and on and on and on because you know this level is strong and it's been coming in from the past for quite some time. Okay, now, the strategy part. Everyone understands support and resistance until now? Everyone with, with me so far? Okay, now let's get into the fun part. 
Okay, we're going to get into the strategy part. When do you draw support and resistance? That's the question. Okay, okay. Yeah, I drew support resistance on the past. You know, yada, yada, yada. I get it. How do you know if the market is running that you need to draw a support and resistance level? When do you need to do it? Let's take a look. I'll show you. How many of you guys are familiar with divergence? Divergence, hidden divergence, um, you know, any other words that are attached to it. Okay. I've also explained it in the previous uh, previous webinar, I think. Um, okay. For those of you who don't know it, no problem. We'll, we'll go into it uh, right now. All right. Now... Let's take a look. For divergence, I like to use an indicator called stochastics. Okay, I'm going to go to insert, indicator, go down to trend, and it's in your list. Oh, sorry. Go down to oscillators, and it's in your list here called stochastic oscillator. I click on that. I use standard settings, which is 533, three, whatever it is. I click OK. And this is how it looks on my screen. Now, let me remove uh, let me remove this um, period separators, so the charts are even more clean. Okay, perfectly clean. You guys see just the charts and the indicator now, right? Now let's go through this. Now take a look at this thing right here. Let me show you an example of how a uh, divergence or okay we're gonna use the word opposite in this webinar okay what I'm gonna say opposite is if the price is doing opposite of the stochastics that means price is going to change directions okay I'm gonna repeat that one more time if price is doing opposite than what the indicator is doing price will change directions Okay, so I'm not going to use the word divergence, hidden divergence, confluence, and all of that nonsense. I'm going to simply use the word opposite. Okay. Now, let's take a look at these charts. Now, the markets are coming down. We create our first low. Okay. I'm going to mark this low. I draw my line saying that, okay, I have my low. Right? Everyone see that? This is um, a peak right here. We're going to do the same thing on our indicator. I'm going to mark the low on the indicator. This is the lowest point. Lowest, lowest. The market continues to move. It moves up. And then it starts to go down. As it starts to go down, we have what we call a breach. We've gone below our recent low right we've crossed now is that the same case in our um, indicator have we crossed below this line at any time no we don't have the breach here since we were going in a downward movement we're gonna connect our bottoms okay when you're going in an upward movement connect your tops when you're going in a downward movement connect your bottoms we're going to connect our bottoms. Okay. From this is our first breach. It was here. And we're going to do the same with our indicator around that time the market was here or so somewhere, let's say. And you can see that the price is telling you it's in a downtrend while the indicator is telling you it's in an uptrend. What we have is opposite. When you have opposite market tends to price tends to change directions. Okay, in this particular case, price was going down, boom, price changes and goes up. This is just, a, just an example I'm showing you right now. I'm going to go in through one more example and then we'll get into putting this together with support and resistance. All right. We can actually use this and this. Let me get you a more clear example. There's tons of examples of this there and uh, trying to get you guys um, the most uh, easy to understand. Yes, I will. I will. We'll do it on US dollar Japanese yen also. 
could you do it on a US dollar or Japanese yen? Yes, yes, I will. Um, okay, so let's take a look at this. <clears throat> the market comes here, creates a high, then it goes down. Okay, I'm going to mark this high right here. I'm going to do the same on my indicator. Market comes down, goes up, we have a breach. We've gone higher than our previous high. Not the case in our indicator. It's not gone higher than our previous high. We have opposite. Since we were going in an upward movement, we're going to connect our highs. At that particular time, we only saw this candle. We didn't see this candle. From here, at that point, we were around here somewhere. Opposite, right? From here to here, totally opposite things. Indicator saying downward movement, while price is saying upward movement. Okay, since price is in an upward movement and we have opposite, means price is going to turn around. In this particular case, price takes a reverse. Okay, everyone understand the concept of opposite or diversion so far? Okay, now let's put this into action. I'm going to remove this line since we already know there's a divergence now or opposite and we see it's clearly at this point we have this information. Um, the timing is actually immediate but um, Mark, I will explain that situation to you. Now, when you have the situation of opposite, remember, if you're just looking at this information of divergence, what happens is you're relying on your indicator, which is deadly. Never rely on your indicator, okay? Now, in this particular case, the indicator is, at this particular moment, when this candle actually went up, the chances are the indicator didn't cross. We don't know if the indicator is going to go down. What if the market actually continues going higher and the indicator continues going higher too? You would never know that this is a divergence then. What you do is you need to, at this moment when this happens and you're like, hmm, there is a possible divergence, start drawing. Mark this area with your line and check. Is this an area of support and resistance? Let's check it out. Let's go into the past and see. What is this area? If we can get that far, let's see. Should I shrink it more? See if that helps. Maybe four hour charts would help. Wow, okay. We don't have any data going further back other than probably the daily charts. That's okay. This example is going to be a little bit difficult to explain, but. Let me use an example that we did today earlier for um, Forex Watchers people in our conference room. What time frame do you draw the line? You, you begin with one hour and you work your way up. I'm going to explain to you guys that thing right now. In, in our conference room at Forex Watchers, we were looking at the four hour chart today on uh, Euro USD. Okay, this is in fact why I have a trade running. Now take a look at this. I'm going to remove all these lines. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Take a look at this. We have a high here. We mark our high. We have a high here. We mark our high. Price is going down as it's coming upwards. Price is coming upwards. Indicator comes up. We have a breach. Now, we have a breach on the indicator, but we don't have a breach on uh, our price. What we're going to do is we're going to draw, since we're going upwards, we're going to draw our tops from here to at that point was here. We're going to do the same with our tops here, from here to this area. Does that look like opposite to you? Okay. This indicates price is possibly going to reverse and turn around in the direction it's going. The direction it was going was long. And we wanted to say, we have a short. When the short is coming up, that's the million dollar question. That's the reason why we implement support resistance. So I draw my line here first. And I'm like, okay, 
what can I know about this area? Okay. Yes, um, George, in a, in a downward movement, you draw the bottom. See, you see how price is moving upwards here? As price is moving upwards, you draw the tops. If the last immediate trend, if it's moving downwards, you, drew, you draw the bottoms. Does that make sense? Okay, we'll, we'll do more examples, don't worry. All right, now, so I draw my line here as I see this um, potential divergence because I don't know um, that the stochastics is going to cross or not. I don't know if it's going to do that. All I know, all, all I can assume is maybe the market continues going long and then it's no longer a opposite, you know? So I draw my line here. I'm like, what is so significant about this area? And then I check. Okay, so I draw my range, right? I take this area, maybe I take the tail also, and I start refining by looking in the past. I go back and I'm like, okay, we have a big candle coming out of here. We have a big candle coming out of here. We have resistance. Let's take it a little bit lower so we can cover the bodies. Okay, we have resistance. We have support. Let's go further back. Ah, okay. So we have support again. We have a big candle break again. Okay, interesting. Let's go further back. We're going, we're going, we're going. Where are we going to end up? Okay, now the next question you guys are going to ask me, how far do you look back? You know, I get this question a lot. Um, it's up to you. Uh, until it takes you to satisfy yourself. Okay, big candle breaches here. Big candle breach here. Markets halt right here. Markets halt above or below. But during this period, you have big candle breaches. Remember, a big candle breach indicates a strong level has been broken. Okay, let's go further back if you want. Okay, take a look at this. Complete support. We're going all the way to 16th of November. Yeah. Until three rules are done. Once you have three rules, you're good. You know, we, you have support, you have resistance, you have a big candle break, and you're up in 28th November. So this level has been holding all the way back from last year. You know, it's not it's not really magic, but uh, you know that's it. So you come back down to the current um, current area, and you're like, okay, this is my area I want to sell from. So. We took a sell and the markets are now headed short. Everyone with me so far? Everyone understand this concept? Okay. So now always remember one thing. When you're doing this on uh, certain currency pairs, Try to do them on all all three time frames. When I say all three time frames, is um, if you're if you're a 15 minute guy, do it 15, 30, and one hour. If you're a one hour person, do it one hour, four hours, and daily. Okay. In this particular case, the four hour says short, as per the divergence or opposite. We take a look at the let's take a look at the daily. Okay. Do we have any sort of information on the daily? Um, Vadi Villan, you can uh, check out the video again. Maybe that will help you if you watch it a couple of times. Okay, Markets are going down. If we draw a downtrend here and we draw a downtrend here, it's the same, right? Our indicator and information is saying the same thing. Okay. So, basically, our daily chart has nothing confusing. Our four-hour charts have opposite information. Our one-hour charts currently has nothing. But take a look at this. We have a bottom here, right? Um, Kumar, uh, one hour and above is my preference. 
we have a bottom here. Do you think we might have a possible breach? Hey, it's possible. If the indicator goes below this area, that means we've gone below our previous low. But on price, look how far the previous low is. How far is that low? That's like 46 pips away. Okay, it's already dropped, what, 45 pips. That's another 46 pips for it to drop today. Seems unlikely. If that, okay, there we go. Take a look at this. Next candle just opened, right? You see this? Do we have a divergence now or an opposite? We have a breach live in front of us. Everyone see it now? Okay. Now, what is the next thing we do? Now that we see this breach, what is the next thing that we do? Check support and resistance. Very good, Kong. Uh, is it Kang or Kong? Which one? Uh, I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong. All right, so I draw my first line here. <laughs> okay, if I'm saying it wrong or just correct me. All right, I draw my first line here. I'm like, hmm, I wonder what is this area? Do you think the market is going to stop here? I don't know. Well, let's check. We have some resistance. We have a big candle break. So we have this piece of information. What about our support? Okay, so now, oh, let me remove this bottom line, sorry. Okay, we can refine this a little bit. Let's bring this a little bit higher here. Okay, and we need to get our bottom area too. Okay, now we're covering a lot of grounds. See here? Hello, Will. Now we're covering a lot of grounds, you see here. We have a big candle break. Big candles coming out of this area. Uh, that's okay, Will. Uh, you can, you can, we're recording it, so not to worry. You, so you can see a lot of level of resistance here. That's covered. Resistance, resistance, big candle breaks again. Let's go further back. Support. Take a look how well the support's holding this whole time. Okay. Are we out by the support a little bit? Let's move it down a little bit. And let's see if this is the this is our little range here. Okay. Okay, it looks a little bit more messy like this, but uh, I'm gonna move it back to where it was. Okay, this seems to be my ideal spot, right? Uh, Lorex, yes, I, uh, this is going to be on YouTube in the next uh, 30 or so hours. It'll be on YouTube. And yeah, if you're watching this on YouTube, please like the video and comment and share your feedbacks. Okay, so we have support, we have resistance, and not to mention we have a um, big candle breaks. Okay, this area holds again and again and again in the past, in the future, uh, not in the future as of yet. But this area just keeps holding and breaks by a big area, a big candle. So my initial thought process is this is the area that I'm expecting the markets to go long from. Does everyone uh, see how I came to this conclusion? Okay. So that means my current short that I have running I'm going to have to go ahead and close because I'm getting a, a mixed piece of sentiments around this area where I don't, I don't see the short continuing very long. If I look at my four hours, you know, the four hours is still going short. Okay. It could be another candle or two. And if that's the case, we need to find another area below it. If this area happens to breach. But as of right now, this area looks like it has a lot of strength because look how much market is contained here. Okay. So that's our immediate reaction. Now, that's that. Okay, we just closed one trade. Now, I think uh, US dollar CAD. Was it CAD that we had a different scenario? 
All right. Let's take a look at another pair to see if we have any other information. Let's see. US dollar CAD. Want to look at uh, pound? Okay, let's take a look at pound. Pound is currently short, right? This was the last short area. This was the last short area. The current market is also low. So it's, it's on a downward movement. So you want to connect your lows from here to here. Okay, but you have the same thing. You don't have opposite situation here. You have a low to a further low. You don't have an opposite scenario, okay? You need to have an opposite scenario first. Then the next thing you want to do is you want to make sure you pick the right support and resistance once that happens. And, and the way to do that is to confirm that your support resistance um, satisfies those three criteria: Resistance, support, and a big candle break. Okay, I believe one of you guys said you guys want to do US dollar Japanese yen. Let's take a look at US dollar Japanese yen. Let's go down to the one hour. Um, let's do, I want to do a black chart. Uh, I think uh, Lisa, you wanted it in a little bit darker. Okay, so let's take a look. Let's insert the um, indicator. There we go. Do we possibly have a breach happening right now? Let's see, we have our high. We do the possible high here. We have we need a candle to go slightly higher to give us our breach, a proper breach that will say it's now saying opposite scenarios. Let's check the four hours to see what what is a higher time frame telling us. Okay, any indications on the higher time frame? We're in a downward movement. When you're in a downward movement, you connect your lows. If you connect your lows, you have a higher low. And if you do the same thing here, you have a higher low. You know, nothing really is saying opposite. Let's check daily to get an idea from our longer term side. Same scenario. The markets are in an uptrend. And this one is pretty much sideways or slightly up. Um, it doesn't.